This is the ASUS GTX 1070 Ti Strix. Now, if you've seen some of the other reviews that are probably going up at the exact same time as this one, you'll probably know that the Founders Edition 1070 Ti is actually pretty much the same clock speed as the vast majority of other 1070 Ti's, including the add-in board partner ones. This is the advanced binning version, and this one is actually auto overclocked, something that uh, NVIDIA weren't very happy about uh, for the 1070 Ti launch. For those of you who are wondering, this card in its OC mode runs at 1683 megahertz in the base clock and 1759 megahertz on the uh, boost clock. Now that is significantly higher than the standard Founders Edition and uh, most 1070 Ti's you'll find right now. And that is because as far as I'm aware anyway, NVIDIA specifically requested add in board partners to not overclock these cards from the factory. Now if you're wondering why Nvidia would ask add in board partners to not overclock their graphics cards from the factory, that's because this card is ridiculously close to the 1080. This card has 2432 CUDA cores, which is only a little bit shy of about 100 less than the 1080's 2560, whereas the standard uh, 1070 actually has 1920, so there's a significant number more in this card. I should expect with any Strix card, this is a triple fan design. It's actually using the new massive uh, three slot cooler. So if you are planning on SLIing these, which is perfectly possible, you will definitely need to make sure that there's a slot in between your cards as this is a three slot design. Now, of course you do have a load of heatsink in between, especially if you compare this to the standard 1060, look at how much heatsink uh, you can see on the side, uh, at least the, the aluminum fins anyway, there is a significant portion more on this card and hence why this runs at about 50 to 60 degrees under full load. The card uses a single 8-pin power connector, so unlike the 1080 where you're likely going to be seeing either a 6-pin or an 8-pin uh, next to that one, this one just uses a single 8-pin. It still does have the fan connectors on the back if you want to use that feature to be able to sort of cool the graphics card with some case fans next to it, and obviously it does still have a very nice back plate as well. Now of course you are all here for the gaming performance, so I was benchmarking this with a 7700K using the driver 388.13 that was the newest driver I could get my hands on I actually took a while to find it because it was hidden in the newest version of GeForce Experience that you could only download straight from the website but anyway uh, let's get started into GTA 5 Unigen Heaven uh, Doom which is actually running in OpenGL as I cannot get present on to work so I can't benchmark in Vulcan and uh, Dirt Rally as well. Starting with 3D Mark Firestrike as you can see it sits nicely in between a 1070 and a 1080 pretty much as you'd expect both at 1080p, 1440p and at 4K. Although at 4K it is a lot closer to a 1070 than I actually thought it would be. Running on uh, Dirt Rally, again, ultra settings at 1080p, you're looking at a little bit of an erroneous result just because of how old the results for the 1070 uh, and the 1080 are, and I, I don't have all of these cards to retest, unfortunately, but especially at 4K, again, it's uh, a fairly repeatable result. GTA 5 is, as you'd expect, pretty close to the 10, uh, 1080s while doing a little bit higher than a 1070, and at 4K, it's actually a lot closer to 1070 than I thought it'd be as well. Doom running an OpenGL, you're looking at 10 FPS lower at 1080p, while considerably higher uh, from the, the 1070 side, and again at 4K it also gets basically identical to the 1070 results, which again I was quite surprised by. When it comes to Unigen Heaven, you're looking at, again, a decent bit higher than 1070, but lower than a 1080, and that continues throughout the full trend. I would mention that some of, these, some of these results, as I said, aren't the newest possible. So as you'd expect, with this card being so close to a GTX 1080 with its core design, you're looking at a pretty similar performance between between the two. Now of course as Nvidia has sort of locked this core down, I do plan on making an overclocking video if you are interested in that, feel free to let me know in the comments down below, but um, if you want to overclock this card obviously that will bring it a little bit closer, uh, and this is a user overclockable, just not factory overclocked, at least unlike you know most versions, um, but either way this is still a really impressive card, the performance is pretty fantastic. Now the biggest question is going to be price, what is this going to come out as? Now of course we do know the reference pricing and what they're what the SEP is, but we don't actually know what the real world pricing is just yet as I'm filming this before launch. If the pricing is as they say it is, this might be an interesting value for people who are considering a 1070 and might push just a little bit further to grab the 1070 Ti, which is a, is a significant amount of performance more. Of course, this is really kind of coming out to battle the Vega 56 and Vega 64 cards, which kind of sit in this sort of A price point and B position anyway. And of course, obviously the AMD card 
cards are uh, going to be running a little bit hotter and using a little bit more power. Uh, but in terms of performance numbers, you're looking at a fairly similar setup. So is this worth your money? Well, if you're planning on going with a 1070, I would personally recommend that you stretch your budget just a little bit more to go with this card. It's a significant bump up in performance, but it's still a really impressive card and probably worth your money. If you are going with a 1080, though, unless you want to save a couple quid and go for a card that is fairly similarly performance, then you're probably still going to want to go with your 1080. And of course, if you're going with a 1080 Ti or anything else, then you're, you're, you're probably pretty happy there. If you're planning on going with a Vega 56, then this could be an interesting card to consider just because of the lower power consumption and lower temperatures that you'll get with this card. When it comes to scoring for me, this is going to be a 4.5 for value for money. When it comes to performance, I think it's going to be a 5. And in terms of functionality, especially because this is probably going to be one of the only cards that comes factory overclocked as the advanced bin version is going to be a fire for functionality too. Styling is going to be, I think, a 4.5 for me, and I think the card overall will get a 4.5 and a uh, gold award. I think it's a really impressive card. It's worth your money if you are planning on picking up a 1070, uh, if you can stretch your budget a little bit more. And while it sits in a very narrow price gap, the performance is really impressive. I'm just ashamed that NVIDIA went with the let's lock everything down as opposed to actually providing a core that was nicely in between the 1070 and the 1080. So I guess... You know they've got to protect their own market, but at the same time, why did they go with the core, the core design that was so close to the 1080? So uh, I guess that's kind of that, really. If you want to know any more about the card or check out the pricing when and where you watch this, take a look at the link in the description down below. If you want to support the channel and help me make these videos on a Monday, Wednesday, and Friday basis, then feel free to take a look at the links in the description down below. There's a Patreon link where there's plenty of stuff available to you, as well as Amazon and Overclock UK affiliate links. So especially if you are planning on picking up this card, feel free to use those links. As it does genuinely help me out. There's also plenty of other links down there too. There's also the subscribe button down there as well. So if you did enjoy this video, especially if you're new to the channel, then feel free to hit that. And feel free, if you are new to the channel, let me know in the comments down below. If you do have any questions about the card or anything else, then feel free to also let me know in the comments down below as well. I'll do try and get back to you as soon as I can. There are some other videos over there for you. And uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. I hope you enjoy the video and we'll see you all in the next one.